This romantic drama movie stars Sarah Fisher, who plays Carly, and Luke Bylink, who plays John, and it begins with a close-up shot of a girl tying her skates and going for a routine on the ice rink. We don't get a glimpse of the girl's face. The shot is beautifully done in the dark, with only one light, and we get cropped images of the details in her outfit and her body as she dances. We can only hear a song and the sound of the skates as she touches and scrapes the ice floor. Suddenly, the music stops, and we hear the girl saying how scared she was and how much she did not want to disappoint her coach. She also mentions her supportive parents who have encouraged her skating throughout the years. The parents smile as they watch their daughter skate. They look proud and happy. As she finishes the routine, she receives a standing ovation. We see that it's Carly herself doing that routine, and the scene cuts to her coach telling her to strive for more and not stagnate with just one win. After a conversation with her colleagues in the dressing room about the coach being too strict, Carly, our main character, believes that since he had been to the Olympics, they should rely on his advice. The next scene shows Carly looking at herself in the mirror, saying that she has a mantra to always find something to be happy about. She gets interrupted by her sisters, who see her in a dress that their mom had promised her and compliment how Carly looks. They tell her to hurry and run off to the kitchen where her mom is writing congratulations on a cake, and her dad is on his phone in a call. The dad seems annoyed with the call, and Carly tries to get his attention. He hangs up the call, and the happy family, with smiles on each face, cuts the cake. Carly and her skating teammates are at a party and start putting some post-its on people's backs with comments. Luke's character enters through the door, and one of her friends goes to find him to distract him while Carly tries to put a post-it note on him too. Luke turns around and asks her what she's doing, to which she quickly justifies with a cotton thing that she was trying to take out of his shirt. But he replies back, saying that he thought she was going to stick the post-it note. She gets shocked and tells him that she had no reason to do that as they don't really know each other. Luke tells her that it's clear, as everyone else has one, and that she has one on her hand. Carly denies it, and her friends back her up. She walks away, and he follows her. She keeps telling him, smiling, that the accusation is preposterous. He asks to see what's in her hand, and she says no. They decide to make a deal. If he guesses correctly what she has in her hand, he gets to take her out on a date. After an intimidating exchange of looks, they both accept the deal. They pinky promise, and he starts guessing. He guesses cutie and is wrong, hottie and is wrong, and then he guesses that she had written her phone number. We see her smiling and crunching the paper behind her back and telling him sorry about how he was wrong and lost the bet. Carly walks away with the paper and tells him to enjoy the party. She goes to a microphone and begins to sing. Luke is now looking at her and smiling. She smiles back. She finishes singing, and the scene cuts to Carly walking at night alone, and Luke comes up behind her, calling her name. She turns around and is shocked because she had never told him her name. He tells her that she is funny and asks if he can walk her to her door as it's dangerous for her to walk alone at night. She walks away, but he follows her. At the front porch, he tells her that her friend told him that she owed him a date. Carly smiles, and he does too. She appreciates the effort and tells him they have a date, and she'll let him know when she can because of practice, as she does it pretty much every day. He asks her what she practices, and she tells him about skating and winning the championship. He looks disappointed and sad about it. He explains that he just knows how athletes never really have time for anything but themselves, and Carly finds that offensive because he started judging her before even getting to know her. She then ends the conversation and goes inside. She looks at the camera, smiles, and tells the audience that he stayed at her door for 20 minutes after she got inside. And then she watched him leave through her window. He notices her and waves goodbye. As he was stepping back, looking at her, he bumps into the car, and she laughs and records as the alarm goes off. He then runs away. Carly is now in the locker room with her teammates, showing them the video, and they tell her how cute he is. The coach interrupts the conversation and tells them to get on the ice. Carly is practicing, and we see her falling and coughing a lot. Her breathing is not controlled, and one of her friends notices it. During the whole practice, she continues to stop and cough and gets out of breath. Her coach goes to the locker room and asks her if she has been doing everything she is supposed to as an athlete, not drinking sodas or doing the cardio outside the ice, and she confirms that she is doing everything as she always has. In the next scene, her mother is with her at a doctor's appointment, and they give her an asthma inhaler to help her. She is then on the ice and uses it, but it doesn't seem to help. She gets tested once again by the doctor and tries to maintain a happy spirit toward everyone. After that, she goes to school and tells the audience that she just went back to normal. She gets late to school as she was skating, and the teacher calls her out for it. As she walks to her table, John is sitting there. They talk, and she asks him to move seats, but he denies it, so she is forced to sit in another spot. The lack of breath continues in the next practice, and it seems to be worsening. She asks her coach to get off her back as she has always followed the rules and really does not know why she is like this all of a sudden. He tells her that asthma is not the problem since there are asthma athletes who have won gold medals. In the next scene, she is in class and receives a text. It's John telling her to look at page 33. She does, and it's a sticky note asking if he can take her out. 
The scene cuts to the couple together on their date. He takes her to a beautiful garden and blindfolds her, then leads her to an empty circus arena. He takes her to the center of the stage and slowly removes her blindfold. They are close to each other, and his eyes do not move from her mouth. She still has her eyes closed, and he hesitates to kiss her. He turns her around, and she has the biggest smile on her face. He hugs her from behind and tells her to open her eyes. As she does, a woman walks in with a baby lion, and she loves the surprise. Carly plays with the baby lion, and John can't take his eyes off her. She glances at him as well, and both of them have a great time. They share a brief romantic moment where they just stop and stand very close to one another, looking at each other's lips as if they wanted something to happen. The baby lion leaves, and Carly hugs him, thanking him for it. In the next scene, Carly is with John, and they are having a meal at a diner, discussing how John misjudged her. However, she surprises him just as he is about to apologize by being super cool about it and making fun of him for running away. John justifies himself by sharing that he had a terrible experience with his ex-girlfriend, who cheated on him while being on the volleyball team. He admits that his bitter and sad emotions led him to say what he said. Carly looks away from him, and her expression quickly shifts from happiness to worry as he asks her about her singing. She continues to feel tired and experiences pain, using it as an excuse to excuse herself from the conversation. As she tries to go away and recover, she suddenly collapses, and John rushes to her rescue. Carly is then taken away, wearing an oxygen mask, and she narrates that her heartbeat was 110 beats per minute when it should be around 50. After the attack subsides, Carly undergoes a CT scan, and she is later placed in a hospital room. The doctors inform Carly's family that as soon as they reviewed the scans, they were able to identify the cause of her breathing problems. Although we don't hear the doctor's specific diagnosis, Carly can observe her family's reaction to the news. She speaks to the audience, expressing how her family will hug her and be unable to hold back their tears. Carly informs us that the scan revealed a tumor on the left side of her trachea, indicating that she has cancer. The doctor explains the rarity of this condition and mentions that they can perform surgery, but not immediately. Carly needs to undergo chemotherapy first to shrink the tumor before they can proceed with its removal. To help her breathe, the doctors performed a tracheotomy. When Carly wakes up, she finds a tube connected to her throat, and her sister is present. A nurse brings a blank board for her to communicate. Carly turns the board to the camera and writes, The anesthesia didn't work. I felt like I was drowning, pain 10 over 10. However, to the nurse, she writes, You owe me John and Carly's sisters purchase a large panda bear and bring it to her, even though it's not allowed. As soon as Carly sees John, she covers her throat, but he insists on seeing it. He asks if she is okay, and she writes on the board that she feels embarrassed for almost dying on their first date. John tells her that on the night she collapsed, he accompanied her to the hospital. He asked her father to speak to his parents to pick him up as his phone had run out of battery. However, he forgot to do so and ended up trying to take the train home, but he boarded the wrong train and ended up in the middle of nowhere. He knocked on a lady's door to ask for help, but she got scared and called the cops. Eventually, he was taken home by a police car. Carly covers the tube again, and he reassures her that it's okay. He proposes a deal, he'll show her a scar he got from sitting on glass in sixth grade, and in return, she'll show him the tube. Carly smiles and ends up showing him. The scene transitions to Carly being out of the hospital and in the chemo clinic. Now able to speak, she tries to maintain a positive attitude but the nurse administering the chemotherapy is not very friendly. Carly is left alone, and her expression once again changes from happy to concerned. She calls the nurse an asshole, and to her surprise, the nurse hears it but simply informs Carly that they'll see each other the following week. At home, Carly addresses the audience, mentioning that she didn't experience the expected side effects from chemotherapy. However, what was challenging for her was the excessive protectiveness of her family, who watched her every move. The entire family participated in the process of changing the tube. They manage to successfully complete the task, and the scene cuts to John and Carly cooking at her house. Carly's mother doesn't appear to appreciate John's presence, but Carly believes they do. She expresses her desire to meet his parents, and he assures her they can do so whenever she's ready. He starts telling her he loves her, but she doesn't let him finish. Carly explains that her condition will only worsen, and he reassures her that he doesn't care, and wants to be there for her through everything. She asks him to promise he'll always smile, and he accepts her request. They share a lighthearted moment, and she jokingly asks him, what do you love again? He initially laughs and walks away, but then he comes back, looks into her eyes, and says, you. They smile at each other. In the next scene, Carly has lost all of her hair and is recording a video where she expresses how much she misses her hair, but also highlights the positive aspects of not having hair. She puts on her wig and hears something outside. To her surprise, it's John. He has drums and a lot of candles spelling out prom. He asks her to be his date, and she happily accepts. The couple goes to the ice rink, but John falls, creating a funny scene that makes Carly laugh. 
However, her laughter is interrupted by a coughing fit, and they have to pause their activity. She tells John that when they were young and managed to master an ability on the ice, the coach would let them ring a bell. She looks nostalgic and sad, and John quickly gets up and says that he wants to ring the bell. She tells him that he can only do that once he conquered an ability, the not falling ability. John rushes to the ring and tries to skate and impress her. He ends up falling, and she laughs very genuinely. Carly is in the locker room without her hair, and her two teammates enter. One of them becomes really excited and hugs her, while the other stands there looking awkward. The enthusiastic friend asks the other teammate if Carly can come to her party, and Carly realizes she had intentionally not been invited. She leaves and tells John she doesn't understand why he is with her, as she feels disgusting. He reassures her that he is there because she makes him happy. As Carly gets frustrated and yells for him to stop pretending that she is a regular girl, he tells her she is still the same girl she was. That she is funny, beautiful, sweet, and caring, it doesn't matter what she looks like. She laughs. The scene cuts to Carly singing at the piano and recording it on her phone. She sends it to John. He loves it and tells her how great the video is. He lets her know that her account is public and that 15 o people have already seen the video. It was going viral. While she is singing, we see Carly getting noticed by Selena Gomez, a famous pop star, and her excitement about it. We also see Carly being happy at the hospital. She notices her chemo nurse, who had been mean to her before, on her sick father's bedside. Carly asks the nurse, in their next session, if she has seen her video, and the nurse has a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with the girl about how she is delusional, and too happy and glad. She tells Carly that maybe she doesn't really know what's happening to her and that she should take this more seriously. Our main character asks the nurse if she has to be dying for her to be sympathetic just once, but the nurse reinstates that Carly shouldn't be singing. She doesn't take it well. In the next scene, Carly goes to school, something she wasn't able to do in months and she sees her locker full of letters and get well cards and smiles at them. As she opens the locker one of her friends, the one who didn't invite her to her party, approached her, but Carr doesn't seem to care. The friend apologizes and tells her that she wasn't thinking and just got scared. She tells her that she missed her, and both friends hug as Carly confesses she missed her too. Then, Carly asks why she was wearing a beanie, and her friend reveals that she cut her hair off for solidarity. Then we have a shot of a bunch of people who are also buzzing off their hair for her. The smiles in the room and the joy transcend through the screen, such a beautiful sequence. Then, now at home, we see John trying to get a buzz cut as well, but she refuses. She also tries her mom but can't do it as well. So then the dad steps up and tells her to do it, and she can finally do the buzz cut. With the repercussions of her video online, Carly is being interviewed live about how she is so positive with her diagnosis, and she explains how she sees the cancer as a contact sport, that if she runs away from it, it would never catch her. She then tells the interviewer that life is too short to be sad. She says that if you get the right help, you can go through anything. As she is talking, we see John's parents listening to her and John walking down the stairs, and she thanks her family and her boyfriend for their support. She has never called him that, and when John hears it, he gets a huge smile. His mother asks him if the girl goes to his school, and he says she does, so we understand that he hasn't told his family about them. Prom night arrives, and her mother looks frustrated and sad. The dad understands and hugs her trying to help with what she is going through. Carly's sisters help her get ready, and she finally gets the night she was waiting for. She puts on her dress and looks at herself in the mirror. She sheds some tears and decides to change her dress at the last minute. She finds a way of covering the tube and walks down the stairs where everyone is waiting for her. They tell her how amazing she looks, and they step back as she reveals herself to John. He is standing by the door, in a tux. He looks at her and tells her that she looks incredible. He reveals that he wanted to buy her a corsage for prom but figured she was done with getting flowers, so he shows her what he got instead. He opens the little box and reveals a necklace with a C, and she looks shaken by the gift. Her expression changes, and she asks him how much he had spent on the necklace. She wants him to return it, since he is off for college next fall. He insists and puts it on her, and she accepts the gift. The couple arrives at prom. The scenery is beautiful, with lights all over the ceiling and walls, a lot of plants, and a band playing. Everyone is having fun, taking pictures, dancing, and talking to friend. We see our main characters dancing, first alongside their friends, and then alone. They get really close, almost kiss and sneak off the party to a classroom to be alone. She teases him with an almost kiss and walks towards a table. He goes to find her, and they share a passionate kiss. She sits down on the table, and he takes her wig off. Carly got scared and slaps him. John tells her that she is beautiful, and they continue kissing. The scene cuts, and Carly shows the audience a picture of her in the hospital after surgery for removal of the tumor. Now, already with hair growing, Carly explains how everyone told her how good she looked, and she keeps that picture post-surgery to remind her that that was when she was looking the worst. We get a glimpse of her looking at John the night of the prom talking to someone, and she explains how he could have any girl he wants, a girl that he could take on dates, a girl that he could eat cake with, a normal girl. In that memory, after she sees him talking to someone, she walks away looking sad. She says that he should be getting ready to have the best years of his life, not feeding his sick girlfriend. 
We then find out why she walked away, while getting a glimpse of him happy talking to a person, and looking at his expressions and joy, she realized that he deserved more and left prom, not talking to him since then. John leaves a message telling her that he needs to understand what he did wrong. He thinks it's because he didn't introduce her to his parents. It's not. The cancer continued after the removal of the tumor, and Carly tried to distract herself. She is now at the piano singing Christina Perry's Human. At the hospital, the family waits for the doctor and once he gets into the room, Carly breaks down the difference between two different cancer diagnoses. He tells them that she is a very rare case. Only two people in the world have had that type of cancer in the trachea. He tells her that she is technically cancer-free and that he needs to see some scans before saying for sure that there was no progression. The family celebrates as the doctor smiles at them. Carly goes to the bathroom and washes her face while smiling at herself. As she is leaving the hospital, she bumps into her nurse, who apologizes for what she had said. She explains how she had seen bad things happening to people who did not hear those things. She says that she works so hard to keep people alive that they end up hating her. The nurse confesses that her father passed away, and Carly thanks her for all her help. At the ice, Carly rings the bell and greets her coach, her hair is fully grown. In the locker room, he apologizes for not being a good coach, and she says that she forgives him, saying that he was never a bad coach. Carly tells him that she wants to get back in shape, so they go for a run. At the hospital, our main character is walking around with her father, and her doctor presents a hospital investor that tells Carly that he loves her voice. He would like to offer her the opportunity to sing the national anthem at one of their hockey games. She is introduced and hears people cheering on the balconies. She starts singing the Canadian anthem, and the camera focuses on her as a bright light brings attention to her face. She finishes the song and has a moment where the proud look on her face is noticeable. She smiles as everyone claps for her. At home, the mother is setting up the table when someone rings the doorbell. She asks Carly to answer the door and she does. She opens the door, and it's John. She tries to close the door, but he manages to get in. He explains that he was never ashamed of her. He was ashamed of his family. He tells her that he wants her to be his and that they are meant to be together. John then tells her that since he was very scared to bring her to meet his family. As he confesses this, he opens the door, and a group of people greet her with a huge smile. Carly laughs. The two families are gathered around the table, having the best time. The moment is filled with smiles, conversations, and good food. Most importantly, Carly and John are looking at each other lovingly. The scene cuts to Carly, on the ice, skating under an enormous light. She gets tired and looks disappointed in herself. After the competition her coach tells her that she is amazing, and that even though she had done better, this was her greatest achievement, to skate in front of so many people that beautifully, after trachea cancer. She smiles and hugs him. Carly does a scan at the hospital. The family is discussing what to eat for dinner while they wait for the results. The doctor walks in, and his expression is quickly noticeable. The scene cuts to Carly, shedding tears and telling the audience that the cancer has spread to her lungs. She is just there, crying and not saying anything, almost as a way for us to feel her pain. She is with her mom in bed. Her mother sings her a song while she cries in her arms. Later, she is cuddling on the couch with John, and he tells her how much he loves her. He then kisses her, and she falls asleep. He carries her upstairs to put her to sleep, and she touches his face and tells him that she loves him too. Carly is sitting on her bed and tells the audience that her nurse said that she should write a letter to cancer, that her father had done it, and that it helped. Carly reads us her letter but from a different perspective. Instead of her talking to cancer, cancer is talking to her. Her speech is beautiful and deep. Then we see Carly leaving the ice ring and explaining how, after competitions, athletes go to a spot called The Kiss and cry where they receive the results. She tells us that she realized that it doesn't matter what happens in that spot, but how many times you are there. What matters is how many times you put yourself out for marks and keep coming back, no matter what the results are. She says that life is full of moments where we can choose to smile or not smile. While she is having this monologue about everything she misses and how cancer is not a killer, and it allowed her to learn a lot, we see highlights of moments that she spent throughout the movie. Carly says that she is surrounded by love. She sighs, and the screen turns black. Carly and John are getting ready to go for a walk, and she hugs her parents goodbye. The couple goes ice skating so that Carly could teach him to skate alone. They look at each other, and the look on her face is so sweet and caring. She tells him that he promised her to always smile. He does, and they touch heads. Then, they proceed to skate away. As they disappear in the distance, a man on the radio tells her story and announces that she died at 19 years old after fighting cancer for two years. He says that she was always happy and that even though she succumbed to the cancer, the cancer didn't win. Then, we see the real Carly, the real girl that inspired the movie. We're shown videos of her skating, at the hospital, and at the hockey game. We then are told that Sarah Fisher, the Carly in the movie, was best friends with the real Carly, and it made sense for her to be the one who played her. The credits roll.